12 minutes is a mind-bending adventure that delves into the darkest depths of human behaviour. Hello viewers, my name is Terrico and welcome to my channel where I explore, explain and expand upon the darkest worlds in video games. Today I'm looking at 12 Minutes, a game that almost exclusively takes place in a tiny apartment, yet contains so much lore and story that it definitely takes more than 12 minutes to find everything. I've got every achievement in the game and I still don't think I've seen everything, so I bet the average player has missed at least some things on today's list. That's right, today we are exploring 12 things you might have missed in 12 minutes. So major spoilers for the game's plot, you have been warned. If I manage to find something you missed, let me know by liking the video and consider subscribing so you don't miss other videos like this one. Starting at number 12, the carpet looks familiar. We're starting this list with an easter egg that I bet at least some of you missed. The carpet outside the apartment you spend most of the game in might be hideous, but I bet some of you thought it looked familiar. That's because it's the same carpet from Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. In case you have never seen it, The Shining shares a lot of similar themes to 12 minutes, mostly darker messages of the human psyche. In The Shining, the family are stuck in the hotel while the winter season blocks the roads. The protagonist of 12 minutes is also stuck inside the apartment, although this time due to a time loop. The Shining also leaves the cause of the horror fairly ambiguous throughout most of the movie, with it not being clear whether there is something supernatural or whether it's all due to Jack's declining mental health. While the movie does seem to solve this later, 12 minutes is the other way around. It seems to strongly hint that there is something supernatural with the time loop, although later on, it does seem to imply that there might be a hidden plot that could explain it all in a different way. Maybe I'll cover that one in a theory. Number 11. Foreshadowing Pictures While we're talking about the hallway, did you spot the two pictures outside the elevator? These only make sense when you've completed the game, or at least reached the father's office. The picture on the left is very similar to the father's bookshelf, with the red book that becomes important later. The picture on the right is a flower, but more specifically, a dahlia. These two pictures serve as foreshadowing for the major plot reveals the game has in store for players, but it's only on a second playthrough that these become relevant, since there is no way to get back into the corridor once the time loop has started. Are these just cheeky foreshadowing from the developers? Or do these pictures actually serve as a hint that there is more going on here than we know? Number 10. The Song Speaking of foreshadowing, the game is absolutely rife with it. While exploring the apartment, the wife will have a number of activities that she carries out. Now and then she will begin to hum a tune. This tune is a real song, and it's called Frère Jacques. Frère Jacques, Frère Jacques, dormez-vous, dormez-vous, sonnez les matines, sonnez les matines, ding dong, ding dong. This is a real French nursery rhyme, which might be hinting that the wife is preparing herself for motherhood and cannot help but hum a nursery rhyme. Songs that are, by design, for children. However, the song takes on a much darker meaning when you translate it. Frère Jacques means Brother Jack, which knowing the full plot of the game is a blatant foreshadow. The song has more relevance though. The lyrics go on to explain how Brother Jack is sleeping and the bell needs to be rung to wake him up. Does this relate to our protagonist? Number nine, you never start a new game. One of the endings of the game implies that the father has the ability to make the protagonist forget everything he knows. In fact, this ending will appear to delete your save file, although it doesn't, but it does reset your progress, forcing you to start the game again, with your character having lost all of the knowledge that they gained earlier. What's really interesting about this though, is that even after resetting your game, the game never has a new game option. Even on your absolute first playthrough, the game will still say continue. This is not only a clever nod to the time loop, but it's also really interesting to think that this time loop and the protagonist forgetting it all has actually happened before you, the player, first arrives. How long has this been going on for? How much do we really know about the game? I'm not sure, but this little detail was very clever choice by the developers. Number eight, the character's names. The game keeps all the characters nameless. The protagonist is labeled you, the wife, wife, although this changes to her once you find out the truth, and the cop and father are named as such. Even the cop's daughter is only known by her nickname Bumblebee, which is very cheeky knowing how relevant flowers are in this story. 
But because I am absolutely obsessed with this game, I did a little digging and I found out some other characters' names. Going through the game files, you can actually find that the developers had names for most of these characters. The protagonist is called Aaron, the wife Sarah, and the cop's daughter is named Carla. Why the developers chose to omit these and keep all the characters nameless is unclear, but another really interesting point here is that the cop and father both aren't named in the files. When you add this to the fact that the father looks exactly like the cop and both are voiced by Willem Dafoe, things become very interesting indeed. Number 7. The Flower Still Grows It seems like everything is reset every time the game loops, either when the protagonist leaves the apartment, dies, or at the same time every 12 minutes. However, this is not entirely true. The flower in the bedroom doesn't reset like everything else. If you water the flower, every time the game resets, the flower will have grown a little bit more. Eventually the flower will bloom, with up to three flowers depending on if you've unlocked certain endings or not. However, if you forget to water the flower, in the next loop it will have started to wilt, eventually going back to a bare plant with no leaves. You can also break the pot with the knife to reset it fully as well. Why does the flower not reset like everything else? Are plants immune, or is the time loop not what we think? Number 6. The pictures change Speaking of things not being affected by the time loop, the numerous paintings around the apartment change over time too. This one was actually pointed out by my YouTube chat during my livestream of the game. The stream is still available on my channel if you want to watch, but the main painting of the trees in the apartment goes through a seasonal change. It starts in summer and it ends in winter the more the protagonist learns, or should I say, remembers. It isn't just this painting that changes though. As you unlock more endings, the other paintings change to reflect the progression of the plot. The bedroom picture begins as a man and a woman together, which changes to a man alone, holding a flower with the shadow of a gargoyle behind him, depicting how the protagonist loses his wife and sees himself as a monster. The picture of an egg in the kitchen, which symbolises new life and could be a reference to the baby, changes to a picture of Ouroboros, the snake that eats its own tail. This is a symbol of infinity and could either be a hint to the time loop or to the protagonist's own loop of learning and forgetting the terrible events of the game. The only picture I've not been able to figure out is this one. I'm convinced that this one is a code, but I personally haven't been able to figure out what it means. Number 5. Completing the Clock There is a particularly tricky ending to get if you haven't read any of the guides out there. To get this one, you have to drag out the conversation with the father long enough for the clock to strike 12 while you're talking to him, but you have to be looking at the clock as it does so. This ending is called Mindfulness, and it appears to remove your ability to continue the game, with guides even suggesting you have to delete your save file. However, you may notice that the clock is now out of focus. If you drag the clock hand back until the clock is back in focus again, you regain the ability to continue. What is very interesting about this though, is that the clock's three concentric circles gradually move as you progress and learn things about the game. Doing this ending will align all three of these symbols on the clock. I'm not sure why the developers would put this puzzle here, making you think you need to delete your save file, but I bet if there is a secret ending that we haven't found yet, this will be one of the steps required. Regardless, talking about the clock symbols brings me nicely onto my next point. The clock symbols have meaning. So now we've established how to align the clock symbols, well, what exactly do they mean? Looking closely at the symbols, you can get a fairly clear picture of what's going on. The two symbols in the middle look like people and represent the couple. The symbol on the right is set at the moment of the reset. The symbol on the left could represent the conversation with the father because it's in the past and it's part of the symbols that make up the eye. The eye representing knowledge, this could be referencing how the protagonist lost his knowledge by losing his memories. But the lit up segment shows how some of them are still there. Finally, we have the sun. The sun could be the happiness the couple had before today. It could be symbolic of the day repeating itself or it could be a more metaphorical hint of things coming to light. These symbols are very abstract and you might have a different interpretation, be sure to let me know down in the comments below if you see a different meaning. Number 3. The Far Cry Ending Fans of the Far Cry series may remember that in Far Cry 4, you could unlock a secret ending by staying seated at the start of the game. This unlocked an alternative story in which the player sides with the antagonist and is the fastest way to beat the game. 12 minutes features a similar ending. If you stay still on your first loop, the wife will sit you down and have a conversation about secrets and her past. She eventually agrees to tell you everything, but tells you not here, with both leaving the apartment together. This unlocks an achievement, but can only be done on a first loop, either your very first time, or after resetting the game with the options menu or the forget option in the father's office. If you try this one after the game has looped even once, the protagonist will cut the ending short by saying his head is too fuzzy right now. 
This could be seen as the happy ending, well, at least for the protagonists. This is the only time the game doesn't loop when the protagonist leaves the apartment, and it can be assumed that the couple missed the cop since they are out when he visits. It's interesting that this seems to be the only way to break the loop, with this being the only scenario that doesn't reset when the protagonist leaves the apartment, which could imply that the only way to break the loop is to forget the past and move on with the wife. I guess they say ignorance is bliss after all. But another way to look at this is that if the player gets this ending on their very first try, for them it is a happy ending, as the player doesn't know the truth, mirroring the characters. Number 2. Groundhog Day References If you haven't seen Groundhog Day, it's a story about a man stuck in a time loop, waking up at the same time on Groundhog Day every day no matter what he does. 12 Minutes obviously shares a bunch of themes with the movie, but there are also a number of references in the game. There is the achievement Groundhog, which you only get by sharing the perfect day with your wife, which references how Phil from Groundhog Day could only break the loop by winning the heart of Rita, his true love. If you look out the window right at the start of the loop, the protagonist will talk about the storm that is way off. He does so while imitating a weatherman, which references how Phil in Groundhog Day was a weatherman who wrongly predicted that the storm would miss Pittsburgh. In fact, the storm in 12 minutes isn't as far away as he thought, which is yet another reference. Finally, the couple in 12 minutes call each other Babe, which could be a reference to the song that plays on the radio every time Phil wakes up, which is Sonny and Cher's I Got You Babe. There are probably more references that I missed, seems like a good time to go and rewatch the movie. Number 1. The Protagonist Shadow As we learn more throughout the game, it comes to light that the protagonist is labelled as the monster, and we see the painting in the bedroom reflects that, showing the shadow of a gargoyle behind the man, which we can assume represents the protagonist. But we actually had hints that the protagonist is not what he seems right from the very start of the game. In the elevator that the game begins in, we can see the shadow of the protagonist cast on the floor, but looking more closely reveals the shape is, well, wrong. The head comes to a point, almost like a hood. Could this be a bug? Perhaps, but the shadow is normal in the rest of the game. I like to think that this was the developers giving one more hint that the protagonist is hiding something. Something that will come to light later. So there we have it, 12 things you might have missed in 12 minutes. If you found this video entertaining or learned something today, please consider subscribing as it really does help against the evil YouTube algorithm. And be sure to like the video if you want to hear my theory that ties this all together. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.